Good afternoon, everybody. It's Saturday afternoon. This is an urgent and important message uh, from me to all of the parents at Southfield Primary School uh, to confirm our first positive uh, case of COVID-19 within our school. This video is uh, will give you some information about our response to that video, uh, to that uh, outbreak. Uh, my plan now is to uh, to share my screen with you so that you are able to see the response. I'm hoping that you are you should be able to see this now. So um, I want to uh, acknowledge the support from the Department for Education in the last few hours. Uh, they've been very, very helpful. They have a dedicated support line. Uh, for school leaders uh, to get support whenever a case of uh, a positive case uh, within school. So I'm grateful to my colleagues at the Department of Education for the help over the last few hours. So what has happened so far, uh, I was informed late on Friday evening that one staff member uh, has tested positive uh, for COVID-19. At that point in time, the Department for Education support lines had closed for the evening. Uh, I called them as soon as possible uh, on Saturday morning, as soon as that helpline opened this morning, that was a few hours ago, uh, to discuss uh, the case and to uh, put together a, uh, a risk assessment, which the Department for Education do for us, uh, and uh, an action plan uh, that we then have to put in place uh, as a result of this positive case. The Department of Education have informed Public Health England uh, on our behalf uh, and uh, instructed me to inform uh, North Hants local authority, uh, which I did as soon as I had um, finished on the phone to them this morning. What the Department of Education also told uh, me to do was to track uh, all of the staff members uh, who were classed as close contacts from Tuesday of last week, so Tuesday the 3rd of November. Uh, I have done that and I have informed all of those members of staff uh, to self-isolate uh, for the next two weeks. What we will also need to do is to ask some of our children to self-isolate as well. And I realise and appreciate that this will cause some disruption and for some of you some significant disruption uh, for the next couple of weeks, and I apologise for that, uh, but we have to deal with this together. It's got to be a collective effort. Uh, we're not going to be able to get on top of this virus and stop it spreading uh, unless we follow the very clear rules uh, which we need to do. Uh, so what I'm about to detail is uh, all of those children who will now need to self-isolate as a result of this positive case. I'm doing this on the back of advice from the Department for Education and the latest Public Health England guidance. We need to shut down the following year groups. So if you have children in any of these year groups, you need them to, I need those children to self-isolate. So children in reception or year one or in year two. Anyone from those classes needs to self-isolate. I spoke, and that includes members of staff. I have instructed teachers to uh, make sure that remote learning is in place from Monday. We're going to talk more about that a bit later on. These students need to self-isolate for 14 days from November the 6th. That was yesterday. They will be allowed back into school on November the 20th, providing they do not develop any symptoms of the virus in that time. They do not need to seek a test unless anyone develops symptoms within that time. Crucially and importantly, any family members of those children do not need to self-isolate unless they themselves have developed symptoms of the virus. If that happens, you must get a COVID-19 test and follow the advice given. What this means is if you have students in reception year one or year two and they have siblings in other year groups, their siblings can continue to come to school. 
We also need to close down our breakfast club and after school club facilities. I know that this will cause lots of disruption for people and I apologise, but we are acting on advice from the Department for Education and Public Health England, as I've already mentioned. We need to close down that provision until Friday the 20th of November uh, for two reasons, which I'm about to detail. Students who attended breakfast club and after school club on Tuesday the 3rd or Wednesday the 4th of November must self-isolate. It's the reason this video has gone to all parents at Southfield because that provision is open to all year groups. And while we ensure that students from different year groups when they're at that club remain in their year group bubbles, uh, it is advice that we've been given that we need to shut down that provision and ask those children to self-isolate as a precaution. The member of staff who has tested positive has had contact with those children and therefore those children must now self-isolate. Separately, all the other members of staff involved in that provision of breakfast club and after school club are now self-isolating. We have no other members of staff who are able to run that provision without breaking the bubbles that we have within school already. That's another reason why we need to close down that provision. I apologise that that's going to cause some disruption. But as I mentioned now, we have to take this action to ensure that we uh, make sure that this one case is an isolated case. If you've paid for that provision already, we will make sure that you get a refund in time. Talk a little bit about remote learning. Now that we have students who are self-isolating, we must, we are legally obliged to provide remote learning uh, for our children where they are self-isolating. For students in reception year one and year two, this will be provided by their teachers and teaching assistants via Google Classroom. The students have been using Google Classroom uh, throughout the first term of school since September. Uh, staff are familiar with it and it is how we are going to provide remote learning where we have whole groups of children who are self-isolating. For children from other year groups who are self-isolating because they attended breakfast club and after school club last week, that may be one or two children from a particular class. We will be signposting and providing remote learning for those students via Oak National Academy. The work will be put onto the students' Google Classrooms. Uh, that's because the other teachers within school are still in school working. So we will make sure that students who are self-isolating are signposted to Oak at National Academy. Parents evening will still go ahead as planned this coming week. Because those uh, meetings are virtual, uh, they can carry on as normal. Moving forward, the school, our school will continue to operate as it has done so far. I am confident in the systems and structures and procedures that we've put in place to keep everybody as safe as possible. Therefore, providing the robust action that we are taking today uh, means that this becomes an isolated case. We don't need to do anything different. What I am going to instruct my cleaning staff to do is to uh, deep clean and extra clean all of the areas that the children and staff members who are now self-isolating uh, I'm going to get the cleaners to deep clean those areas this week uh, so that we can ensure that those areas are uh, as clean as possible when the children come back in two weeks time. As I mentioned, we are confident that the systems and structures and risk assessments that we have in place keep everyone as safe as possible. And I am confident that this will be an isolated case. However, we have to prepare for just in case it's not. Uh, and I will be reviewing our risk assessment um, this week to make sure that that's the case. One other thing that I'm going to be doing in the, over the course of the next 48 hours, and I've already instructed Mrs. Riley to do this, is uh, to contact our meal providers at Fresh Start uh, to ensure that those children who are self-isolating, uh, who are entitled to free school meals, uh, that's all of reception year one and year two, 
uh, how we are able to provide those meals for those children who are self-isolating. The logistics of what that's going to look like, we're going to have to work out over the course of the next 48 hours. Um, but I'm hopeful that we will be able to get something in place uh, for Monday. I know that some of you are going to be worried about this, uh, naturally, of course, worried about this, and I understand where that worry is coming from. But I hope that you can see uh, that the robust action that we are taking as a, as a, a, on advice from the Department for Education and from Public Health England uh, will make sure that this is an isolated case and that we can contain it quickly. Um, I want to remind everybody of the importance of some really basic measures that we all need to do. As I mentioned earlier, this is a collective effort. We have to respond to this together. Because school remains open, I have to remind everybody about the importance of maintaining two meter social distancing. I know sometimes that's tricky particularly on pinch points around the school, the path up from the office to the gate, for example, uh, the pinch point on the path round by the back of the reception classrooms. It can be difficult. We will have to be patient and maintain our distance. We know because the science tells us that maintaining two metres is a good thing and minimises the risk of transmission. Please, when you are on the school site, ensure you are staying two metres away from everybody. As I've mentioned numerous times before, I'm grateful to those parents and carers who are coming down to school with their masks on. Uh, I'm really, really thankful to you for doing that. Uh, if you are medically exempt, uh, then that's, you know, I'm not expecting you to wear a mask. But if you are not medically exempt, I do expect parents and carers to have masks on. And those masks need to cover not just your mouth, but also your nose. Um, there's no point having a mask if you're not going to wear it properly. So please do so. My staff now in school wear masks pretty much all of the time. Uh, and if they're not wearing a mask, then they're wearing a, 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 a visor face covering. Um, please make sure that you are helping us reduce the risk of transmission by wearing your mask correctly. The children are very, very good at washing their hands and sanitizing their hands. Now they have developed routines. They do it all the time. And I'm really grateful to the children for doing that. But this is just a reminder to anyone, uh, any grown ups who are coming into school of the need to sanitize your hands uh, when you come into school um, and to, to wash your hands as just as a general course. Remember, 20 seconds. That's the science. Um, and so social distance, wear a mask, wash your hands. They're all fairly straightforward things that we can all do to help reduce the risk of transmission. What I'm going to do on Monday morning as soon as I'm back in the office uh, is to review uh, our COVID-19 risk assessment. I did a review last Monday because that was the, the designated review date uh, and updated it to include uh, staff wearing of face coverings. I will revisit that risk assessment on Monday morning in light of the outbreak of this case uh, and make any changes should I need to. Um, and then I will communicate that to you uh, if necessary. I hope that you can see that we are taking a robust action uh, to make sure that this positive case is, is one positive case and it, it doesn't go any further. I apologize for the insignificance and, and potentially significant, ins uh, significant disruption that this will cause uh, for some of you, and I am sorry about that, um, but we have to work together. We've got to do uh, support each other during this difficult time and during these difficult couple of weeks. I appreciate, as I've said numerous times, I appreciate your support and help with this. If you do have any questions uh, about anything that I've shared just now, please get in touch with me. My email address is on there. I will do my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm, I will be working most of the weekend uh, to, uh, to, to support colleagues through the next couple of weeks and make sure that they are uh, they are they they feel supported and valued. And like I say, if you have anything that you want to ask or share, please do so. Fingers if I now stop sharing that, do that. 
The final thing for me to say is, uh, uh, is just a big thank you for your support and your help uh, during the last few months. And I thank you in advance for the coming uh, support that you're going to give us in the next few weeks. Uh, it's a challenging time for everybody and it's never been more important uh, to look out for each other, uh, to be more kind uh, and uh, and to do the right thing. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye.